All right, am I coming through okay? All right, as uh, Allison said, I'm here today to talk about over the air and really uh, how do we make 5G real? And a big element is a major inflection point in the technology being used as we go to millimeter wave and over the air. Uh, a lot of people are looking into uh, how to use this and incorporate these sorts of uh, new test methodologies in your uh, test flow. So let's get into it. So really, one of the major market trends we see in 5G is opening up these millimeter wave frequencies. You know, around the world, there is a crunch on space for millimeter wave frequencies to deploy new technologies. As we go from 3G to 4G, 4G with multiple bands, and now 5G moving forward, we are expanding into the higher frequency realm to really identify new spaces to deploy these ultra wideband signals. You know, signal bandwidths of 100, 400, 800 megahertz, and even higher to one gig are really uh, of consideration when we talk into 5G. And what that does is that drives a fundamental change in the design architecture of the devices that we have. So no longer do you have a traditional cabled environment when you are designing your RF front ends. You're, what you now have in that these frequencies are a phased array antenna, which is bonded directly to your RFIC. So a phased array antenna gives you the high gain and the beam steering elements that I'll talk about later. But really, phased array are required in the millimeter wave and as such are introducing no connectorized test. So that means that you uh, no longer have the traditional cable that you once had. So all those type N cables that you're using in your uh, test setups, you can throw them away because they're no longer any good. You're also looking at new test methodologies. Your traditional test methodologies are becoming obsoleted. So you need to have considerations of not only how good is my signal, what's my signal level, but where is my signal. So I'll talk about that also in a minute, of the spatial domain aspect. And uh, all this comes into the last bullet here, right? O OTA, over-the-air tests, are really driving a new challenge in the industry because of the 5G millimeter wave frequency space. So what is OTA? Uh, OTA is pretty much all things to all people, but we break it down into about three categories. We have this concept of radiated antenna, RF parametric, and functional performance. These are types of measurements that you might make in your traditional cellular or Wi-Fi devices. And when we, as we move into uh, the traditional OTA space, it was really that red circle. It's this radiated antenna measurements. They've been, been done for many, many years in cellular at sub six gigahertz, and even 28 gigahertz for electronic warfare and commercial or satellite communications is being done today in a radiated environment. The difference though, tomorrow, this shift to OTA is this, these other two circles here, the right two circles, making your traditional RF parametric measurements, EVM, for example, is a figure of merit that everybody's very familiar with or doing a true um, data throughput test, uh, which traditionally could be done in a cabled environment, is now going to be uh, over the air. So the industry is looking to shift, and what we had done in aerospace defense just doesn't scale into commercial comms. The, uh, as you might imagine, the budgets and the commercial communications and the scales are just orders of magnitude different than what we have done in quantities and scale for aerospace defense. So it's really a challenge presented uh, in a change in paradigm, we said. And the last really uh, drastic element is this idea of beam steering and beam foring. What you're going to need to do is take these measurements that traditionally were cabled, and again, were a measurement of maybe how high your power was and test your data throughput. Now you're going to need to do this in a beam forming in a, in a spatial domain. So uh, not only do you have a direct line of sight bore site measurement, but you'll need to steer your beam and still make sure that your device operates. And as that beam moves and as that beam steers in your handset that you're holding, you know, what is my data throughput? How do I maintain a connection with the base station? These are all things that are um, really facing our industry as we move forward. So let's talk about the spatial domain because that's one of the new elements I'm talking about. So you, uh, when you take spatial domain, 
and you in introduce the concept of mobility, you really start to see the, the challenge being faced here. In this example on the left side, we've got the first 5G base station here in this beautiful little graphic, making a connection down to uh, the car as we drive along. And in this case, the car is seeing not only a direct beam from the base station in the downlink and in the return making an uplink, but it also has a backup plan or a secondary beam that this device, this car in the case, has to be able to track in order to uh, effectively maintain the link uh, as it drives along. Should something happen to the primary beam, a backup plan or a secondary beam is required. But even more complicated, you're going to have multiple cells. And the second cell is going to be bouncing signals off of the passing truck in the other direction. So your device now really has this beam management challenge that we're talking about. Where are the beams? How many are there? And what is the best decision to maintain the link and the user experience that they, we've come to expect? All of this is, uh, is only touched on in 4G, but a major challenge as we look forward to 5G. The best way to think about this is the beam management sequence. We have to search, acquire, then you're tracking the beams, you're providing feedback on your link, you may, <coughs> excuse me, you may refine, you know, you may jump to that backup, and then that's the switch exercise you see here. So as you start talking about your OTA vocabulary, beam management is a key element in that vocabulary to start uh, looking into in the development of your solutions. So what is Keysight doing to bring uh, innovation into this new space? Well, the first point here is that through your development cycle, one OTA solution will not meet all your needs. So you need to take into account what the types of measurements you're looking to do, what are your challenges, and what are the key metrics that you're looking to accomplish. And then from there, you can have a wide range of qualifiers. Are you going to test a near field versus a far field element? Is there a spatial domain to it, as we talked about in the last slide? And then finally, are you in a true functional environment, or are you, you focusing in on a, a certain parametric uh, field where your, uh, your design is being tested? But the common elements of all this are, number one, it needs to be cost effective. We understand, as I said earlier, aerospace defense uh, over the air does not scale into commercial comms, so innovation in this space is key. Second thing is fast, accurate and repeatable. Replacing a cable is, uh, introduces a lot of risk and a lot of unknowns. So having the confidence in your system to have it be fast, accurate, and repeatable really uh, will give you the confidence that your measurement is being done correctly. Uh, we talked about the beam forming, the beam steering. Your calibration is really going to support your repeatability. And the, the compact nature. Everybody knows those OTA guys, they sit at the end of the hall and you know they make all the magic OTA measurements happen in these chambers that are the size of a room. That's not scalable anymore. So on 5G, you need to look into the compact nature. How can you shrink down your OTA system and how can you effectively and cost, uh, cost effectively deploy these throughout your test flow? So the last point is, is we need new innovation. We need new measurement methodologies, and we need new form factors. And Keysight, I'm showing one of the solutions here in the corner, but it's re research in this whole space and has solutions coming to market that if you're interested, please find me after this speech, and uh, we can get together and we can share a little bit more about where your challenges are in this space and the solutions that Keysight can bring to those. Thank you.